A lot of the time when people come in with joint pain, one of the concerns is that they might have arthritis. And maybe you have joint pain and you're worried maybe you have arthritis, or if you do have arthritis, you want to know a little bit more about it. So in today's video, what I want to do is talk to you about arthritis, what it is, what happens with arthritis, and what you can potentially do to help manage your pain or prevent it from getting worse. So the first thing we need to really understand is what is arthritis? The best place to start is just by looking at the word arthritis. So anytime you see a word beginning with arth, that essentially means something to do with joints. So it could be arthralgia, arthritis, arthroscopy, and so on. So arth is to do with the joints, and then itis is to do with inflammation. So anytime you see itis, that's basically talking about inflammation, so arthritis, tendonitis, uh, bursitis, and so on. So essentially what we're talking about with arthritis is inflammation of the joints. Now, in today's video, we're only going to be talking about osteoarthritis. So there's different types of arthritis. You have osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and many others which we're not gonna to discuss today. Osteoarthritis is essentially wear and tear of the joints where something like rheumatoid arthritis is more to do with a systemic or inflammatory condition. So anytime I talk about arthritis in today's video, please just know that I'm only referring to osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis is essentially wear and tear of the joints. Now it can happen in pretty much all joints, but it tends to happen in the bigger joints most commonly. So hips, knees, shoulders, it can also happen in the spine, ankle, wrist, basically anywhere there's a joint, but the big ones are the most commonly affected. Now generally, osteoarthritis is not an inflammatory condition. Although the name suggests that it is, it's, it's not characterized by inflammation. But having said that, osteoarthritis will often be accompanied by inflammation in the surrounding areas. So things like the muscles and tendons will often have some degree of inflammation. So osteoarthritis is to do with the breakdown of the cartilage that goes over the joint surfaces. Now to fully understand that, what we're gonna do is have a look at a joint model. So here we have a model of a, a pelvis, a hip, and femur. So this is your thigh bone, essentially. So if you're walking along, this is kind of the pattern that you would see. So if you have a look at the joint, you've got the ball and socket joint, so you've got the head of the femur, and then you've got the socket joint or the acetabulum here. This blue surface that you can see is representing cartilage. Now cartilage is a smooth, friction-free surface, and what it does is it allows movement, freedom of movement. But in arthritis, this blue surface, this cartilage surface, which goes on the head of the femur and on the inside of the joint as well, the, on, on the inside of the acetabulum. So the cartilage in, in the joints in arthritis starts to wear thin, and eventually it wears down to the point where you expose bone underneath. And when you do that, as you're moving your joints, you start getting more grinding and clicking and locking of joints. Generally speaking, it can be quite an uncomfortable condition, but the arthritis itself doesn't necessarily cause pain but it's the inflammation around the joint that does cause pain. So the actual arthritis itself is not necessarily always painful, but the pain often comes from what's going on around the joint. Now, what causes the cartilage to break down in the first place? Well, the most common is poor mechanics. So for example, in people whose joints are slightly differently formed, perhaps maybe at a different angle to what it should be, and that's quite a common thing, you know, it's genetic variation within the joints. That can cause different loading through the joints. So the joint is designed to move in a certain way. But if there's slightly altered mechanics, whether that's from the joint or from anything else like a difference in musculature, or let's say if it's in the leg or the hip, maybe the foot has dropped, the foot arch has dropped, causing more rotation to go through the thigh. So different mechanics going through the joints can cause difference in loading through a certain particular part of a joint. So that increased usage can start to wear out the cartilage. So that's one way. 
having a family history of arthritis doesn't guarantee that you're going to get arthritis yourself. And that's one concern that a lot of my patients have, and maybe you've got that concern as well. Someone in your family has got arthritis, and you're worried that maybe you're going to have it too. Now, just because someone in your family has had it doesn't guarantee you're going to have it, but what it could mean is that you could have a similar makeup of the joints, of the muscles, of the way you move, and that alone can cause the wear and tear through the joints. So it's not that the cartilage is predisposed to wearing thin, it's more to do with the mechanics and the way that your body is shaped. So that can potentially set you up for an arthritic joint in the future. Now, one very common thing that can happen with arthritis is trauma. So anytime you've had an accident, like a, like a serious accident that's affected the joints, for example, or, or fractures or breaks within bones, that can lead to uh, predisposition of arthritis through altered mechanics. And the kind of same thing with your occupation as well. If you're in an occupation, perhaps where you're doing a lot of manual handling, lifting heavy weights, constantly squatting, trying to pick things up, that could predispose you to sort of knee arthritis or hip arthritis. Or if you're an athlete, like say you're a runner, long distance runner, there's a lot of impact going through your knees, hips and ankle joints. So that could set you up for sort of thinned cartilage and therefore a risk of arthritis. Or let's say you're doing some sort of job where you're lifting constantly, so you're using your upper body or you're using heavy machinery. The vibration through machinery can wear the joints thin as well. Occupation can certainly put you at risk of developing arthritis and the same can be said for sports as well. So if you're in a sport with very repetitive style movements, that could potentially set you up for uh, your cartilage to wear thin. And then the last one, and probably the most common one, is to do with obesity. Simply by being overweight will put a lot more strain and compression through your joints, particularly in your hips, knees, and ankles. So you're putting a lot more force through the joints, compressing the cartilage, and potentially putting your cartilage at risk of, of breaking down, wearing thin, and exposing more bone, and therefore creating arthritis. Now we can suspect arthritis based on someone's age, based on their case history, so whether they've got a certain occupation or history of trauma, and basically what they say as well. So if they're saying there's stiffness in the mornings, they've got clicking, grinding of joints, that can be indicative of an arthritic condition. And then you can confirm that using an X-ray or MRI. X-ray, what you'll see is that the joints are closer together you won't actually see the cartilage on the x-ray, but you'll see that the joints have got less space between them. So that will often indicate arthritis. And then on the MRI, you will see the cartilage. So potentially you could see the breakdown of cartilage. But either way, both are very good tools for diagnosing arthritis. So when it comes to management of arthritis, what we want to try and do is patient-centered management first. And there's going to be four things that we're going to try and do. The first is to maintain muscle strength and, mu and joint stability. Now, I haven't mentioned it up to this point, but it's very important to have good joint stability. And if you've got good stable joints, then the joint moves exactly how it should. If you've got an unstable joint and it starts moving all sorts of different directions, then you're gonna put a lot more shear stress through a joint and therefore wear a joint out a lot quicker. So by having good muscle strength and joint stability, you're gonna protect the joint a lot more. Now, a lot of the time in arthritis, patients try and avoid using their joints or using that area, which means that they inevitably lose muscle strength. So it's really important to maintain strength to support the muscles and support the joints. So the second step is to prevent the joint from being overloaded. So if you're in some kind of profession where you're constantly lifting heavy, is there a possibility that we can reduce the load going through those joints? So lifting less heavy weights, so dividing it up into more trips, for example, or by getting some kind of assistance, such as lifting gear or people to help with the lifting. The third is to try and relieve pain. Now, first of all, we're gonna try and do this without medication. So things like uh, using ice packs, and keeping the joint moving. So ice and movement will both help to reduce inflammation. The ice will help because it's suppressing the blood into the area. 
So you're reducing inflammation with that. And movement will help because it's getting blood moving through the joint, which means that any inflammation will not stay stagnant around the area. So the increase in blood flow will help to push inflammation away. So ice and movement are both very good. They kind of do the opposite things, but in conjunction with each other, they work very well. And then the last one is just simply modifying daily activities. So for example, if there are any daily activities that you feel are making your problem worse, then maybe try and reduce that daily activity or try and find an alternative to it. So for example, if you're a runner and running is not the be all and end all for you and you're quite happy to change, maybe something like cycling where you get less impact through the joints or swimming where you can take the load off the joint because the water is supporting your weight. Then we can start looking at other approaches as well. So for example, we can modify nutrition. Now, although I said earlier, osteoarthritis is not necessarily an inflammatory condition, simply by changing the diet, improving the quality of nutrition, so more nutrients, more minerals, more vitamins going through your diet will help your body's ability to heal. And then by reducing sort of uh, inflammatory foods such as sugar can help to reduce inflammation. Then we can also add in supplementation. Now, a lot of my patients are always asking about supplements like glucosamine and chondroitin. Quite often you, you buy supplements and they're together. So let's talk about them individually. Examine.com has got several studies about glucosamine, which show consistently that there is a minor decrease in the pain associated with osteoarthritis. And also they've shown that there's a possibility that it could slow down the degradation of the collagen within the cartilage. So potentially glucosamine can have an effect, although only a minor effect. Now chondroitin has got less evidence to support its use. So in fact, according to examine.com, there's not a lot of benefit towards osteoarthritis for chondroitin. However, since chondroitin and glucosamine come often together, it's worth taking. And the advice that I give my patients is, why don't you try a pot or two and see if it helps, you know, see if you feel any different. If you do feel different, then maybe continue taking it. It's certainly not likely to cause you any harm, but you know, obviously I can't recommend it because the evidence is just not strong enough to support it wholeheartedly. Try it, see if it works. If it doesn't, if you don't feel any different, then just stop taking it. Let me know in the comments. Do you take glucosamine? Do you take chondroitin? Do you take them together? If you do, do you get any benefit from them? So let me know in the comments section below. Now, if supplementation doesn't work, then of course we've got pain medication. So pain killers could potentially just relieve pain associated with arthritis. Now you can also get topical anti-inflammatories. So that could potentially help with the inflammation and therefore the pain around the area. Always speak to your pharmacist or your doctor regarding medication. So don't take this as a prescription for what you should do. Then the next thing is we can look at joint debridement. Now joint debridement is where your surgeon goes in with a keyhole surgery and just cleans up the joint, gets rid of any excessive cartilage that's floating around or bony growths like osteophytes. So it just cleans up the joint and maybe helps to make it a bit smoother. Now the cartilage itself doesn't repair. So unfortunately your surgeon can't go in and repair your cartilage, but they can clean up the joint and just make it work a little bit smoother. Now, of course, if your arthritis does get progressively worse, then potentially you could be looking at a joint replacement. I've seen a lot of patients who have had joint replacements and actually have said it's the best thing. Now, of course, that helps the joint to be smoother and gets rid of the, uh, the arthritis and the poor joint mechanics. Possibly also helps to reduce the pain as well. Although once people have had joint replacements, they are often left with tightness. So there's definitely a phase of rehab that needs to be done after. Another question that people ask me is, can a therapist like myself help with arthritis? And this is a question I get a lot. And actually, we can't help with arthritis in terms of fixing the joints. We certainly can't help the repair. We can't change how the joint surfaces are. What we can do is help with the pain associated with arthritis. So we can help with the quality of the muscles. We can help reduce inflammation, reduce tightness around the muscles and educate patients on better body mechanics. 
or exercises that they can or can't do. So it's worth seeing someone, but we certainly can't help clear up or fix the arthritis itself. So I hope today's video has helped you. Hope you now understand a little bit more about arthritis. If it has, just give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I will see you soon.